Hey guys, welcome to the epilogue of seven, Six Days of Sacrifice. When we last left off, we just found a bomb. Nothing for it. I've got to try and disarm... Wait a second. The bomb's already been defused. Well, that's good news, so let's get the hell out of here. If there even is a way out of here. Shit! Oh, fire! That's not good. No. No! Not to Cobb. Oh my god! What a huge explosion! Damn. Fuck, Cobb. Six days later. That kind of sucks. He's like the first main character to die die. You're watching UCBC News. Investigation continues into the circumstances that resulted in a nano-explosive detonation in the country county of Buckinghamshire six days ago. The blast completely demolished the ophthalmology building, which had been purposely evacuated beforehand, and several lead ophthalmologists are being held for questioning. Although the dead nation has not yet been found to have caused any loss of life, two individuals last seen in the area have been reported missing. And environmentalists are already calling it the biggest ecological disaster in the entire history of the, of the country? Yeah, country. The investigation continues. Damn. Ah, Malcolm. I love you as a character. As an avatar of destiny, I cannot judge. I cannot afford to question events, only encourage them to take place as history demands. And yet I wonder. I wonder why the Order of Blessed Agonies expected Chizou to enter this universe. After all, the creature so dependent on magic could not possibly survive in a world where there is none. The prophecies were wrong. Freehorn, the Order, the Tall Man himself, all deliberately misled by the Pain Elemental. But why? For what purpose was the bridge really constructed? It was open for mere seconds. Nothing came through from the ethereal realm. So did Jizo's plan simply fail? Or was his intention not to send, but to receive? None of this matters. I led Dekab to the destiny demanded of him by the timeline. Now I must wait. Two centuries from now, my younger self will require my guidance. The eternal cycle must be set into emotion again. And while I do not judge and feel no regret, I find that I do not relish this task. Damn. That's going to be hard to go into the future and convince your younger self to kill your father. In the 18th century, the prophet Jack Freehorn put the paper to three books of Chizou, the blood of the Twelve Sacrifices, still fresh on his hands. The Book of the Prince, the Book of Victims, and the Book of the Bridge. This is the central tent in the faith of the Order of Blessed Agonies. Tenet. What is not known, not even by the highest occults, and not likely even by the prince himself, that there was a fourth book. It seemed to contradict the other prophecies, and Freehorn discarded the draft, thinking it a jarbled, gar jarbled message. It, this was the book of the new prince. Here's what it said. On the day of the bridge, the prince returned to the court of the king, and bowed low before the, pres the presence. And the king was greatly wrathful, and he said to the prince, Why have you returned, O prince, you who would betray his king, who would defy his own flesh? And those words, the king threw down the prince and stripped away his vestments, and the prince once again became the arrogant man. And the arrogant man said, I only wanted to please you, my king. I know your scheme to replace me. If I betrayed you, it was only to remain your prince. And the king replied, 
I have not forgotten that you are the arrogant man, and still your arrogance binds you. Blinds you. Who are you to question my plans, you little man of linear time? Who are you to, to believe he knows what is best for I? I, who has drunk down the agonies of a million men. I, who has seen to the edge of forever. You are not my prince, O oh arrogant man. You were never truly of my flesh. And Dekab... Well, Dekab becomes... The new prince. And the king took the vestments of the prince and gave them to the man of purity. And the man of purity became the new prince. And the arrogant man wept aloud. Why have you betrayed me, my king? What have I done that should earn this wrath? Came the reply, Long ago you were offered the chance to fulfill the role of the bridge, as being of both magic and technology. You could have proven your commitment to your king. You could have chosen your successor. But in your arrogance, you, re you resisted and created the child to become the bridge in your stead. Av no. Subvert my will and weakly sought to avert destiny and the destinies of others. Forgot that came up. Crap. But rejoice, arrogant man, for I have provided another opportunity to fight your fate. Simply defeat your successor and return to my side. And the new prince faced the arrogant man. And the new prince threw down the arrogant man. And this is my favorite part. Protect him always. It hurts. My king. Ha! Huh, there's a Trilby clone in here. It hurts. The guide. It hurts. The take his place. Oh, new prince. Poor, poor Dacab. The poor Trilby clone is probably still tweaking his mind out. And the arrogant man knew the name of the king. The book of the new prince. Yes, folks, that was six days of sacrifice. The story that basically, t that basically saw the forecoming and told us of the opening of the gate between the realms of magic and technology. The story behind what happened after the events of Seven Days of Sacrifice, and how, well, yeah, of how Malcolm Somerset became the caretaker, and how poor, poor Theodore de Cobb became the new prince. And honestly, out of everyone here, the most free person, the person who is somewhat free, even though now is a slave of the destiny, is Malcolm himself. Yes, he is technically free of Chizo, but yet he is a slave to destiny, and for that has to basically, basically follow destiny's will to make sure people are put in their place where they belong. The person I feel the most apathy towards is actually Dacab. Yes, it was destiny's aversion to make him the new prince, but yet, I feel bad for him. If you're wondering why he was known as the as the man as the as the man of pure or the pu man of purity, is because he went through every single bit of the requirements to be pure. He went. He basically think about it. Um, the path of uh, the path of the body. He broke almost every single bone in his body falling on the, the, the elevator shaft. Um, mind. He was slowly going insane down in the lab. And, of course, the purity of the soul, which can only be accomplished once. The loss of Janie. Because of this, he was the purest entity of the cult of blessed agonies. And because of that, Chizou sought him as the new prince. 
And although Chizou did bring him back to life, he is now forever the slave of the prince of Chizou, and will probably know torment and agony unlike any other. It really is a sad destiny, and people will probably argue that Trilby was probably was also one of freedom. But if you think about it, yes, he was free after the events of Notes, but yet his his job as the guide was to make sure the bridge was created. And though he did die of old age, his clones, which were still technically a part of him, had to continue out this task unknowingly. And of course, because the caretaker saw uh, that actually helped finally destroy the body, I mean the mind of John Defoe. And of course, with that with that one clone, new torment of none other until 200 years later, well, technically 200 years and six months later, when Malcolm the caretaker would finally free Trilby of his curse, but then again, from the soul of the clone, bring the real original Trilby back to life. It's a vicious cycle that will never end, and that's probably why I love the uh, Chizou Mythos games, because it is basically a game that says we cannot change our destiny. Destiny will forever bind us to the same laws that will basically will make sure history will repeat itself over and over and over again. It has a lot of great characters. Everyone knows Trilby. He, of course, he's a gentleman thief, but honestly, my favorite characters have got to be Malcolm Somerset and um, Theodore Dukas because their fates are so depressing and sad that their characters just have a complete character arc, and it's really fascinating, especially for Malcolm, to watch as he's this poor innocent soul um, who's basically been playing on the blame for every single murder on aboard the aboard the um, Mephistopheles, sent to an insane asylum, and eventually accepting his madness and becoming the caretaker. And of course, Six Days was the story of how Theo became the new prince. Anyway, guys, this has been the Chizou Mythos series, probably one of my favorite series of point-and-click adventure games next to the Myth series. Um, so that's it. I'll see you guys next Let's Play. Um. I do plan on doing more point-and-click adventure games. I already know what the next one will be. Uh, let's just say we're going to have a little bit of fun in the uh, 1940s with our good friend Dr. Jones. Yes, folks. Of course, that'll probably happen after I complete Real Mist, and I'll be working on that as soon as this goes up. So I'll see you guys next time on either Real Mist or the next point-and-click Let's Play. See you then.